Hello and welcome to our very first video of Shadespire Tactics. Today we are going to talk about the second strategic decision you have to make when playing a game of Shadespire. First decision of course being which band do you want to play. Second decision is which game board should you use. Now remember uh, one player chooses the game board first second player chooses a, a, a game board to uh, put against it in any way they like so you don't have any if you're choosing first you don't have any knowledge of how it will connect to the other game board so which game boards are best to pick first and which ones should you stay away from and we'll go through all four existing game boards now so the first board we're going to look at is this one you can see here on the screen and we have chosen to call it the pit due to this pit over here. This is kind of an interesting board because at first glance it has these uh, block tiles here. But we're talking about uh, choosing this board as first pick. So your opponent gets to place his board anywhere he wants. There are many things you have to notice on board. One thing is the block tiles here. Uh, they could have been a big help or a big hindrance uh, for anything moving along this axis right here. But the key thing about this board is the placement of the deployment markers. You have four deployment markers over here and you have three over here. Which means that if your opponent attaches any board to either this side here at the end or down here, just illustrate it. And that me and I'm really serious about any board whatsoever. Let me just slide this over. Either like this, there it is, uh, the combination here. That means you have limited uh, positions there, like this. Here you have only two deployment places over here, whereas the uh, your opponent can get a lot of models to bear on that. And worst of all, edge against edge means you can only get three models that can actually enter the play during your whole first activation phase or the first three uh, actions four actions this means that for liberators this is not a big problem three models is all they have so they can still bring everything to bear but for corn who have five models means they are going to have two models towards the rear uh, and any actually any future warband that has more than four models is gonna get in trouble with this one because they're only gonna be able to get three models into the fight during the first third of the game and they might have a fourth one back uh, backfield to uh, pick up some objectives but that's it they cannot get a fourth guy into the fray uh, and even as a defensive play, if you want to play really defensively, you ha then you have to play your defensive from all the way back here on the map. You can have a defensive line. You can't have a defensive line further upfield, which means you give the whole of a half a board away to your opponent. And that's way too much. So I think Liberators with the three models will be the only ones who can actually utilize this board to their advantage. So, that's the first board. Okay, so for the second example, oops, there we go. Uh, I've chosen the other one with um, blocked squares. This one, uh, you might think is has the same issue as uh, the first one I uh, sh showed you with only three positioning squares down here. And everybody else has to be back and that would be true if it wasn't for what's happening on the other side of the board because even for the liberators that only have three models yes then these could be viable but your opponent's gonna attach to the opposite end of the board now for any game we are assuming that the liberators if they are have been chosen will go first 
or choose who goes first actually um, not necessarily uh, they go first but they get to choose because they will always unless they're playing against other uh, another band of liberators they will finish deployment first which gives them an extra critical on the dice for who uh, gets to choose whether or not to go first on the turn the big issue with this board or the biggest issue there are a few but the biggest is this square right here if you deploy a model on this square that model will be far from any kind of support if the liberators choose to go first yes they do have some possibilities of a first uh, activation charge um, and any first activation charge done by the liberators will most of the time result in a kill because they all do two or three damage and these guys have two or three moons so that's just picking and choosing if they go up there to make a charge and that's the only place he can actually make a first turn charge yes he, d he gets a kill but now he is vulnerable to the entire warband and nobody can help him let me illustrate this guy moves all the way over here no oh, sorry there um, he doesn't even charge he just moves over there nobody can support him he gets he can now get three attacks before this guy can act again because he charged which means he cannot hit the hit back that's three swings of the great axe which definitely kills this guy two is probably enough of course when he dies then this guy can move in but this is one guy for one guy that's a very bad trade-off uh, for the liberators and when that once the next guy comes in well you got the rest of the band to kill him the other up, uh, possible charge uh, for the first turn is a charge here and you have basically the same result you might get a kill but then everybody can attack him from that square and again get three swings to kill him without any chance of retaliation attacking when you have a model out here is gonna be bad for you now if they don't want to have first turns and you get first turn against them you have lots of options to charge that square right here this square cannot be, uh, be reached by the other uh, liberators because you only have a three a three square move so from this square you can hit him he will kill you afterwards yes but then you get to focus him down it takes two attacks to kill a liberator that means you sacrifice one of your models to kill one of theirs again very good uh, uh, for the reavers so this square here is a no-go for deployment so you deploy they deploy a big further back field now they have a wall right here and that's really not an issue because that wall doesn't help them if they take first turn uh, first turn they actually only get one possible charge that's the same one as before and that's got just gonna get them killed so they're gonna give away the first turn which provides all kinds of options actually because now you can move this guy now you can't even get charged that way around and you can move him over there now for him to get attacked there are this guy can get here or this guy can go all the way over here it's probably the best shot because killing him means the other guy can get over this way or that way so he is not completely naked right now but still everybody can get to bear here and he can only get one guy in to help him out he might get a model and a uh, uh, he might get two models if he's lucky before he goes down uh, that way but probably it will be one of the, this guy out and another guy wounded for two models in trade and that's still not really um, in favor of the liberators if it's the other way around then it's really bad because well, 
We still don't want to put in position anybody here because that's a free kill. That means... I even have to push this in to show you all the guys at the backfield. They are way down there. Again, again uh, most boards uh, you can position against this one will have at least two up here and a third one just slightly back. This wall you have here is going to be used by your, on, uh, your opponent to move slightly onto your board, denying you glory uh, cards. And then they're going to use this wall right here to keep you pushed back onto your board. And they're actually going to deny you everything on their board. And might even from there at some point rush down and grab an objective. It's just this board, no matter who you play, uh, uh, which uh, group you're playing, no matter what your strategy is, it is bad for offense, it's bad for defense. Um, you cannot push for, uh, you cannot get the denial uh, victory condition, which is three points, three glory points uh, towards the end of the game. You have no way of stopping uh, your opponent getting it, and you have no way of getting it yourself. Um, and that's a lot of uh, glory that you lose out on and that you actually hand over to your opponent. The only good thing you might say about this, well, your opponent's going to have a hard time actually annihilating you. Yes, but you are not going to annihilate him either. So that's uh, I would I don't I cannot uh, imagine any situation or any warband uh, any playstyle that would favor this board as a first placement. It can. Any board, of course, can still be used as a response to somebody else. But as a first pick, the staircase, as we've dubbed it, is dangerous. Very dangerous. And I would not use it in any competitive play. I am going to use it quite a lot, actually. But that's just to see if I can disprove my theory about this being really bad. I'm going to lose a lot of games in the near future. For the third board. I picked what we have dubbed the mausoleum because it has a kind of a Camry motif going on here and yes we do miss Camry. The mausoleum here. This is a very interesting board. Uh, it does not have any blocked squares. Um, it has a fairly wide dispersal of deployment areas uh, which means that you can act in any di direction more or less from this particular map. Also, because of no block squares, means you have a lot more liberty of placing your objective markers. And remember, if you're placing the first board, you get to place three of these. And remember, this is very important. The rules for placing these is only the very last positioned objective marker can be on an edge square. Otherwise, they have to be somewhere on the board, away from the edge, and two squares away from another objective and not on one of the deployments. For the Liberators, that only have three guys, you don't know where your opponent's gonna attach his board, but he, you have, if they attach just over here, let me just that, on this line here, you have three there or you have three here that are fairly close and can you can gather your men very easily and they can support each other. Same with the edge, you get these three squares here. If you want to play further back, you can do that easily. Again here, you got three right in the face of uh, the opponent. That would actually be kind of a dream scenario for, um, for the Liberators. On this side over here, again, you got three right here that can move in quickly, or you can position them on these three. Here, again, three that are a bit more... Uh, out but as long as you don't move the one nearest your opponent the other two can move into support easily the same goes with the net alignment right here that guy looks exposed but the other two can actually support him anywhere even with only a three square movement as long as you don't move the front guy forwards on an edge against edge like full edge on uh, you get all the options of uh, where do you want to deploy three guys for the Reavers, since they have a bit more movement, they are going to have 
at least four, probably five guys can actually get into the fight, uh, get into the attachment of the two boards within one move. So they can all make a charge against somebody who moves forward against them. Two, or three, or maybe even four of them will be able to charge on the first turn, even if nobody moves forward, depending on how the alignment is exactly. If somebody just for instance attaches along the edge it's very very easy to get tempted to start placing your objectives towards the back if you do that you are going to need one model maybe even two to stay back to keep these and you are not gonna get them into the fight at any point because somebody who's down taking claiming this objective toward that he all the way down in the end he's never gonna make it back to the fighting same goes here that means you need to do one movement to get onto the objective another two movements to get in back into the combat that's three action used to get one single glory point that is not a good trade-off and if you are the liberators well forget about ever seeing combat if you're all the way down here so i would definitely recommend getting your objectives around the midfield and maybe even slightly forward depending on your strategy um, I might even consider pushing them all the way up here and if I want to play really aggressive I might even get tempted to play some of my objectives on my opponent's board just so I can move my models up there and they can claim objectives on the way and still be in the fight so this board which we have dubbed the mausoleum I would definitely consider first for just about any strategy. If I want to play a bit defensively, I can deploy, if we have an edge alignment, somewhat backwards, if I want to do that. Or I can even, for defensive play, I can move, deploy fairly uh, far forwards, move up to support and create a wall. So everybody is supporting everybody and Let's remember, when Liberators charge, they tend to kill on the charge, especially against uh, the Reavers. So by choosing your charges correctly, you can usually get one kill out of a charge. So that would mean in the first four actions, um, before the first end phase, you would have moved all the way up here, ready to take your opponent's board. You could even, if you need to, need to be on your opponent's board you could as your final action move this guy forward and get onto the opponent's board and even if they have blocked you like this you could actually go around this board promotes uh, a, lot, a very aggressive playing style uh, placing it on narrow combinations makes it uh, make sure you need to move up and then attack uh, anything that is positioned along the long edge uh, one board against the other is going to provide ample freedom to get everybody into the fray very quickly uh, I think this would be the mausoleum here would probably be my go-to board for most fights but I am a very aggressive player no matter what I play so uh, other players might feel differently but for any kind of aggressive playing style this would probably be my go-to board so on to the very final uh, board this one we have dubbed the fountain due to this pool here okay this one looks a lot like the previous one uh, it has no block squares it has well since our seven there are fairly spaced out uh, deployment uh, areas this is not a completely useless board in any way but it does have a few weaknesses first of all this uh, the deployment areas are a bit further away from the edges they are kind of grouped three and three here and you have one there which could be okay for the liberators um, thing is you don't want uh, this is actually a very good board for attach if somebody attaches to this end or if somebody attaches to the other end for the liberators because they can get three men here three so your opponent will not attach edge against edge instead oh, let me demonstrate this they're going on this one you're going to get an alignment that looks like this. 
something like this. Now three squares. That's me. That sounds in theory like a really good thing for the liberators, because three squares, three tough models. That's a big fat wall right there. Except you only get to move one guy at a time, and your opponent gets to do stuff in between. So, for you to block that gap here, the liberators would need to position themselves up here. Which leaves them very much in range for anybody positioned anywhere near. Because there's a lot of possibilities of getting a lot of guys close to that area. So the first guy, again, we have first guy moving up. Might make a charge, might kill, take somebody out. And, but then again, he might not because this guy here might be a position a bit further back. So to make a charge here, they actually have to charge past the three squares that they would want to bl uh, block off. And that leaves them wide open. So they don't really want to do that. Which leaves them open to getting charged in response. And everything can be brought to bear against them if they're p positioned all the way out there. So they might want to position themselves a bit further back. Again, if they have positioned themselves further back, and let's remember they get to choose who gets the first turn, probably. Now the Reavers cannot charge them straight off the bat without getting just put down one at a time. So of course they won't. Either they can just say, well I can leave one guy back to pick up some objectives on my own field and then I can move forward onto your board slowly but surely and leave the liberators to take that first charge because as long as they get to crawl onto the board they get to dicta uh, dictate uh, how the game goes. So that would mean, since the Liberators probably let, you, let the Reavers have the first turn, then on the very fourth activation, they would make a charge to take somebody out. That gives them a 50-50 chance of having first turn to get back into safety before getting mowed down. So a 50-50 chance that they get to kill a model for free which is okay, but the other 50 part of that chance is that they're gonna get punished a lot for getting that kill. That's not good odds. And also, since you have to use one of your activations and you need first turn to pull back, that gives your opponent a lot of leeway. Even if you got out unscathed, this guy has just moved, which means he cannot support anybody. That means somebody else is going to get focused down, and he cannot move in to support. The thing is, if you want to play the, the defensive game, that means you're going to have objectives backfield. Because they're staying back, so they want that uh, objectives a bit. That means they're still going to have to leave one guy back here to score anything. That guy is out of the fight. That means you can then, the readers can leave one guy out of the fight to pick up objectives here. So that means they have four against two, and that is definitely to the Reavers' advantage. If the Reavers are over here, I don't even have to put up the models, I think, because this square up here is going to be very dangerous. And they're going to have a guy positioned all the way back here. That's just bad news. This guy is not going to make it into the fight. This square here is more or less a death, death sentence. Um, very susceptible to a first turn charge. Uh, and if you if this is the board that's been brought, more people can be brought up to support the guy that charged and killed this one and even if I'm gonna switch it around a bit this seems like a very fairly defensive position but if you choose the first turn so that means you want to charge if the liberators charge from here whoever charges is again probably in deep trouble um, this guy can get a charge kill against he can pick an opponent more or less now but if you want somebody who doesn't have support which is uh, always a good idea uh, he could gamble on taking out somebody with support and then he could pick uh, a guy who's fairly expensive because he can charge any of these three guys but that's risky because he has support and the attack might fail and then you are really really uh, <laughs> worse off so you might pick one of those without support now on this setup here, 
charge there, that's against the leader, so that's not a kill. And that's a charge, you can't do anything else this turn. Next thing that happens is probably somebody's gonna charge you right there, meaning that nobody else can get into the leader, and then the leader can just swing away until you're dead. Only one model got hurt, you lost a guy. Another uh, possibility is charge over here, again. Nobody can really get in to support. This guy can support a little bit, but not really. And you just can get focused down. Especially with, remember, they have a ranged guy who can just move move over here and kill, kill, kill you. Playing aggressive from this position is not a good idea. Playing defensively. Give the opponent the first turn. Well, one thing is this guy can try to sneak around. You need to have some objectives over here, because you cannot have objectives here. Or even three, you're placing the first board, remember? So three objectives, something's gonna have to be on the other half of the board. So for you to pick up that, you need to dedicate a model to never touch the fight. Anybody can start sneaking around here. Yes, they can be charged on the way around, but that means leaving a model very exposed. So your opponent can do that. Uh, they can play the waiting game and just start picking up uh, things. You could leave a guy over here to pick up that and protect you against that, but that guy is never gonna reach the battle. Sorry, let me just blew that up. This guy, he's not gonna reach the battle because he's back, uh, backtracking uh, to get the objectives and prevent somebody to run down. Well, he can just choose not to run down and then just focus on your two guys. Five against two, bad odds. This edge alignment is bad. Let's just assume it's the other way around. These guys are probably uh, gonna be able to decide to start. They can get first turn charge in, take out a guy uh, right there. That guy seems exposed right now, but he's not really that exposed because this guy can reach him for support, this guy can get, reach him for support. So yes, he's gonna get damaged. He took out a guy, somebody's gonna charge him, he's getting damaged. But no matter where he's getting charged, somebody else can reach that square and take out the charger. So that means you get to take out two models for one guy, which is a good trade-off. So this particular lineup really screws up uh, this map for anyone. But other than that, this particular one lineup, this map could actually work. I think I'm gonna line them up uh, very end in the order of which I would prioritize the maps. Also the very favorite one that is going to be my top pick on most games uh, because no matter what you can uh, your opponent cannot mess this map up completely this one one we're calling the pit very decent for starting map for uh, the liberators because no matter what you do they can get three models close together um, other than that it does promote I think a slightly uh, more defensive game so this one again going for the defensive playing style uh, your opponent can do uh, get, gain a slight advantage in a lot of ways on this map uh, but it's only a slight advantage uh, finally this one this is right now I have a hard time imagining putting down this board as the first pick for any kind of strategy and actually winning the game. It has a lot of possibilities as a response map uh, because then you get to turn it and co connect it but if you don't, uh, if your opponent connecting this they're gonna trap you. I am going to play a lot using this as starting map just to see if I can find any kind of usage in but I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Um, somebody out there might have seen something I haven't. Uh, might see possibilities, might uh, see uh, things. So if you have uh, a different priority of the maps uh, if you actually consider this a good starting map please tell us uh, remember next week new war bands are arriving they might some different strategies i still cannot imagine that any of those war bands would actually benefit from this particular map but the other ones uh, they might and i might get surprised and further on into the future there are going to be arriving more maps so they might change things a lot. So, comment away, have the discussion, and tell us how wrong we are.